In this video, I'm going to share with you the exact secret or rather the easiest way for you to have a magnetic and a charming aura and a charming personality. Because I'm pretty sure that we've all met those individuals, maybe at parties, maybe at social events, or maybe even in our own friend circle, who just have this nice, amazing, beautiful energy to them. That no matter what they do, no matter what they say, no matter where they are, we just are very drawn into their energy and into their presence. And if you're someone who's wondering, okay, how is this person doing it? And how is this person so charming and so magnetic? And you found the right video. So with that in mind, let's actually get into the video. So the reason why we find some people so charming and so magnetic, while being not so drawn or not so attracted to other individuals, is authenticity. The individuals who are authentic, the individuals who are completely and totally themselves, if they're enjoying their party, they're enjoying their party. If they're not enjoying, they're not enjoying. They're not really putting on a show. They're not really pretending to be someone else. But individuals are that level of authentic, they become magnetic. Because in a world where everyone's trying to put on a persona, everyone's trying to play a character, everyone's trying to be that cool person, that charming person, that intelligent person or whatever, this authentic individual really does not care. And this authentic individual is actually truly owning who they are. And because they do so in such a nice, effortless, classy, I would say nonchalant manner, they become very, very, very magnetic to us. So we all know that yes, authenticity is good and authenticity is important, but how do we actually become authentic? Like what is that one recipe that we can all employ to become our most authentic selves? So the way I would define authenticity is I would say an authentic individual is someone who knows who they are, plus who owns who they are, plus they do so without any guilt or shame. And I'm not just saying this, there was actually a research that was conducted that found out that authenticity is actually the highest vibrational frequency that you can operate on. Because for the longest time, we've all sought in the frequency chart, peace or love is the highest that we can get. But no, if you're authentic, you're actually operating even higher than love and even higher than peace. So if you can just master this exact formula of knowing who you are, owning who you are and doing so without any guilt or shame, you will operate on the highest vibrational frequency. So the first question in this entire authentic recipe actually is, but how do I know who I am? So many times we get so lost in other people's opinion of us, in other people's perception of us, in us trying to become that cool person. We get so lost in those narratives that we really lose who we truly are and we really lose our core. And because we've lost our core, because we've lost our true essence, our true personality, we can't really show that to the world and that is why we don't ever become magnetic. We become one of that individual who is a part of the crowd. That is why step number one for us to become authentic is to actually find yourself back and actually find your true, your authentic, your core self back. And to do that, we will be doing an exercise. We will actually be doing a journaling exercise in this video. And if you really wish to find who you are in order for you to become your most authentic self, I highly recommend that you pause this video right now and get yourself a pen and paper and start doing this exercise with me. So question number one that you need to answer is, who are you when no one is watching? Like what are your personal interests? What are your personal hobbies? What makes you the happiest? What makes you the lightest? And what makes your energy like really, 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 really good. And I want you to really think about that and really write all those scenarios or all those places or all those things that make you, you and that make you really, really happy. So to give you an example, if I was doing this exercise, I would say that I'm really, really happy or I'm really, really content and I'm having deep conversations with people. I'm not someone who likes to have shallow talk. I really struggle with having shallow talks. I think I would have to work on that thing of mine. Like, you know, how's the weather? The weather's good. Like, what about you? Like, I cannot do that. The most authentic I've ever felt in any conversation is when I'm really getting to know that person. Not just like having that shallow talk of, oh my God, I have to speak to you. I'll just speak to you. No, I like to really ask them about who they truly are. Like, I always like to dig deep. I always like to get to know their life story. Like I have this thing where people tell me their life story very easily. So it's because I have that personality where I like to know about these things. And that is what makes me feel the most alive and the most authentic. If you're someone who likes to joke around and that's your style, then that would be it. So whatever comes authentic to you, whatever comes magically to you, and whatever makes your soul light up would be that reason. Are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? Are you naturally good with people? Do you like to talk to people? Or are you someone who has that small group where you just are the intellectual one having all the intellectual conversation in the corner of the party? Like whatever it is that you are, really try to get to know yourself and really I would say spend 10 to 15 minutes in this particular question. The second question is who are those people or who are those celebrities or who are those friends 
that you're naturally inspired by and that you're naturally aligned to. And I think this question is very, very important because the people that we are inspired by, the people that we're aligned to actually have a lot of traits in them that we also have in us. We just have to let those traits come out. There are some people that feel like, oh my God, like she is amazing or he is amazing. And this person just gets me. This person is very much like me. If there are certain individuals that are like that for you, and I want you to really think about the traits that these people have and why is it that you're attracted to these traits. Because the thing is that the more you can become aware of the traits that you're attracted by, the easier and easier it will become for you to actually embody those traits for yourself. And the more you can embody these amazing traits that you yourself are so, so inspired by, the more authentic you become and the more magnetic you become. And if you can't think about a celebrity as such or a person as such, just write the traits that you yourself are very aligned to or you yourself are very, very inspired by. So say, for example, if I was doing this question, I would say that I'm someone who's very inspired by women who are very ambitious. I really like to see when women are ambitious, when, you know, they don't think that they just have this one role that they have to play in the society, who are very confident, who are very powerful. I wouldn't say it's the that girl aesthetic. I would say the woman that I'm inspired by is someone who just gets what she wants. She just is the boss you know she doesn't have to be bossy she just is the boss and for me that is such a nice inspiration because I feel like I want to embody that but at the same time I also want to be someone who's very kind who's very genuine who's filled with love who's filled with life so I would say my ideal woman or my dream woman would be someone who has these masculine traits because she wants to do things in her career because she wants to be respected because she wants to become her best self but at the same time she is also very nice she's also very kind She's very sweet to everyone she meets and just likes to help people. And those would be my ideal traits. So now that I know that these are my ideal traits, I have a picture of what my most authentic self, what my most lovely self would look like. Because I know for a fact, if I can embody these traits, if I can embody this personality, I will be so happy. I will be so content with myself. And then I would naturally have this way about me where I don't have to prove myself to anyone because I'm operating from my authentic frequency. So just like I did this exercise, you guys should also write about that dream person that you really, really want to become, exactly the traits that they have, exactly the things that makes them them. And write about that and try to embody those traits as much as possible in your daily life. So the third question, which I would say is also very, very important, it's actually a reverse question. And the question is, when are the times you feel the most pressured to be someone else? Okay, so many times we know what our authentic self is, right? We know exactly what makes us us. And we know exactly how we are truly. But at the same time, we feel the pressure to put on a facade for other people. So in this question, I want you to really think about those times where you've had to put on a facade in a social situation or in any situation where you felt that you were not operating from your authentic frequency. And once you know those scenarios, do the five whys exercise, okay? So why do I feel pressured in social situations? Maybe that's because I get a little nervous in front of people. Why do I get a little nervous in front of people? Maybe that's because I am a little intimidated by people. Why am I intimidated by people? Maybe because somewhere down below, somewhere in my core, I have a low sense of self first, and that's why I feel like People are on a pedestal for me. Okay, so that is the reason. The reason is that I sometimes have a low self-worth and because of which I have to put on a facade, I have to pressure myself to be someone else because somewhere I think that people will not like me the way I am. And that is the main reason. And now once you know the reason, you can actually work on that reason and try to eliminate that reason as much as possible. So definitely do these three questions and do these three exercises. And once you've done that, let's move on to the latter part of authenticity. And that is my favorite part and that is to own who you are and to do so without any guilt or shame. So step number one for us to completely own who we are is to actually fix our insecurities and fix our low self-worth. More often than not, the main reason or the main thing that stops us from being authentic is our low self-worth and sometimes it's our inferiority complexes. Because we have these inferiority complexes, we see other people as more important than us, we see other people on a pedestal and because now we've put them on a pedestal, we have the pressure to perform and because we have the pressure to perform, we cannot be authentic. I remember I gave this job interview and usually my speech is very good, okay? I talk in a nice manner and really talk to people. I have this thing, okay? But this particular job interview, I put this job on a pedestal. Because I put this job interview on such a pedestal, I gave so much importance to this job interview 
I literally couldn't be myself. I literally couldn't even answer the questions like how I would if I was not nervous. And then obviously I definitely didn't perform well in the interview. And yeah, like I could laugh about it now because whatever like, you know, stuff happens, it is what it is. But from that experience, I realized how important not putting things on a pedestal is, not giving too much importance to a thing is because the moment we give too much importance to that thing, we give the exact opposite to us, we make ourselves feel inferior and we make ourselves feel below that thing. And if you're someone who faces this exact thing in social situations, and maybe that is the reason that is preventing you from being your authentic magnetic self. So here all you have to do is you have to really become aware of those stresses that you put on yourself and try to accept yourself the way you are and try to understand that no one is on a pedestal, no one is more important than you. Either all of us are God or either none of us are God and there is no in between. And really internalize that statement and really understand that statement, okay? Second of all, if you have certain insecurities, if you feel like you have a low self worth, if you have low confidence, if you have some things that you need to work on, try to work on those things. You okay? try to work on your confidence, try to work on your skills, try to work on your speech, anything about yourself. If you feel like you can improve this thing, and if this thing is stopping you from becoming your best self, try to work on those things because competence increases confidence. If you don't feel confident right now, work on your competence, work on your skills, work on your talents, work on your way of being. The more you can work on these things, the more and more confident you will feel within yourself, the more confident you will feel the lesser inferior you'll feel, the lesser of that impurity complex that you'll have, the lesser of that, the more magnetic and the more authentic you become. The second thing to own who we are is to understand one simple fact, and that is that it is not that serious. If you ever fail to be authentic, if you ever fail to, you know, be your true self, just understand it is not that serious and you will be fine and you will be good in the end. And just having that, I would say, sense of humor about life that, okay, if I fail at something, if I embarrass myself at something, if I embarrass myself in a job interview, I can always laugh about it later on. Because every single person I can tell you right now is thinking about how they are coming across. No one really, truly is thinking about you. And that's actually a big, big relief. Because if no one really cares, everyone's thinking about themselves, everyone's thinking about how they are coming across, you can also just be your authentic self and no one will care. And even if people care, even if some people like you, some people don't like you, because authenticity can be polarizing, at least those who actually like you will like you. So would you want to be friends with these amazing people? Or would you want to be friends with everyone and not be really deeply connected to anyone because you're not being authentic? The third thing to truly own who you are is to see yourself as the main character. In a way, we're all living in a movie. And in a way, we actually are the main character of our own lives. So I feel like when I switch my mindset from someone who actually has to impress people to this mindset of, okay, I am the main character and this is my movie and I will get exactly what I want. And if something doesn't work out, it doesn't matter because I still am the main character. When I have that mindset shift about myself and because I'm a Leo, it actually does help. My life becomes 10 times better. I don't feel the pressure to perform. I don't feel the pressure to impress. And because now I don't have any of these pressures, I see myself as the main character. I think that people are going to impress me and not the other way around, not in an egoistic manner, but in just a high self-worth and a good level of confidence manner. Life actually becomes easy for me and actually becomes really, really easy for me to actually be super, super, super authentic. The fourth thing is to be present in the moment. Sometimes the reason why we're not magnetic, the reason why we're not authentic is because our energy is wandering literally everywhere. People like to feel heard, people like to feel seen, people like to feel important. And if you don't give them that power to feel important, they will not find you magnetic. Okay, and there's this very, very nice book called How to Win Friends and Influence People that talks about this very concept very, very, very deeply. Just by being present, just by relishing the present moment, really shutting off your monkey brain for some time and really talking to people in a way where you're really interested to get to know them, not in the sense that I'm just trying to become a cool person in front of you, just like interested to get to know them, get to know their interests, get to know what they are up to you become very magnetic because this person's like oh my god she was so charming she made me feel seen she made me feel heard she really listened to me she really wanted to get to know me that's so unique that's so nice because no one's doing these things the more you can have fun in the present moment the more you can have that light energy that good energy in the present moment the lesser and lesser your overthinking patterns will affect you and the easier and easier it becomes for you to be authentic and then just wait and watch how pulled in people are into your energy because you just are in it. You just are living. You just are flowing. And everything about you is super, super, super charming. The next thing is to actually be detached. Okay. Just be detached from anything and everything that you do. 
If you're in a social event, be detached with the outcome of, oh my God, are people going to like me? The more you can master detachment, the more you can be like, okay, I'll be fine either way. I'll be fine if I get this thing. I'll be fine if I make the impression. I'll be fine if this happens. And I will be fine if it does not happen because I am the main character. I decide what makes me happy and what doesn't make me happy. There is nothing outside of myself that can actually give that to me. When you become that level of powerful, when you become that level of, oh my God, I decide my worth, that is when you become like super authentic. That is when you become super magnetic because now you operate from this frequency of, I have nothing to prove to anyone. I'm just here to have fun. I'm just here to enjoy myself. I'm just here to have a good chat, a good laugh, you know, a good conversation. And that's it. And because you don't really have these overpowering thoughts of, oh my God, I have to make an impression. I have to do this. You become very light. Your energy becomes very light. And the last thing in this entire recipe of us becoming our most authentic, magnetic selves is to not try to be cool. So if you ever see this trend on social media, if you ever see this person who's this cool personality, and you think that just by copying this person or just by imitating exactly what they're doing, imitating their dressing sense, imitating their speaking sense, you become like them. And that is so, so, so not true. You become a wannabe. And I say this in the nicest way possible. When someone tries to be cool, they become literally the exact opposite of being cool. The cool person is cool because they're authentic. The cool person is respected because they accept themselves. So if you really want to become the cool person, you have to stop trying to copy the cool person. You have to try to find your own cool personality, try to find exactly who you are. And the more you can embody your authentic self, the more cool you become. And that is when people are actually drawn to you. If you're interested in content like this, content about productivity, about life, about meaning, about just becoming your best self and living your best ever life possible because in this channel, everyone who's watching this channel will live their best life possible. So if you're interested in content like that, then definitely hit the subscribe button down below and join this amazing fam that we have. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much, you guys, for watching this video. Hopefully, I will see you on my next one.